Lincoln once said, no one is poor if they have a godly mother. No one is poor if they have a godly mother. And then he added, I remember my mother and her prayers for me and how they have followed me and how they have clung to me. All that I am and ever hope to be, Lincoln writes, I owe to my angel mother. Wings like a mother hen, covering and protecting her little ones from harm and laying down her life when it's necessary. Teacher appreciation, right? Whether it's Sunday school or this past week, I've got teachers in my family, and so they know how important it is to give thanks to God for those who teach in church and in public schools and private schools. The story is told of a teacher who was teaching her kids fractions. Some of you may remember those days learning fractions in school, and so the teacher said, here is the problem, what's the answer? A mom, a dad, five kids, one pie. What portion of the pie will each one get? One boy raised his hand and said, one sick. And the teacher looked at the young boy and said, you don't know your fractions. And the boy looked at his teacher and said, you don't know my mama. You <laughs> see, my mom would cut that pie into six pieces, and she would say, I don't need any, because she would want the rest of us to have more. Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, and they said to him, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, you need to skedaddle, you need to get out of here, because Herod, he thinks he's a lion, Herod is looking for you. And Jesus says, you go tell that little weasel of a fox. <laughs> you go tell him that today and tomorrow I cast out demons and I perform healings. And on the third day, I finish my course. You go and tell him he doesn't have to come looking for me. I'm going to get right in his face. Like a mom of him. Like a mother hen. Jesus he is weeping at times because he wants nothing more than to spread his wings and to gather his brood under them. To guide them, to feed them, to keep them warm and safe, to protect them, to save them. And Jesus says, but you would not. And without Jesus, one is as good as dead. You won't see me again, he says, until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's Palm Sunday. That's Holy Week. That's Good Friday when the mother hen lays down her life for her chase. And on the third day, hallelujah, Christ is risen indeed. That's the gift of mothering that we pass on the faith of Jesus to the little ones entrusted into our care. I want to tell you a story. Her name is Betty. Mm -hmm. Betty Leclercus was a dear friend, was a member of the congregation that I served in Little Falls, Minnesota. Now I didn't know that Betty, when she was 20 years old, second year of college, had a lump on her neck and was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease. I didn't know until I got to know Betty that she almost died. She had a massive dose of cobalt radiation, and she only had a 50% chance of living. But she survived. And then I didn't know, but she got married to a man who was genius, and he was abusive. The things that he did to her, you can't repeat. And by the grace of God, she got out of that marriage, which was no God-given marriage at all. And then God restored her joy. And she met Duane. And she and Duane got married. And I was there. Betty always wanted to be a mother. And so in school, as a special ed teacher, she was mothering 
lots of kids. And then God surprised her when she thought that she would not ever be a mother of her own child. And she had Sam. Sam is 24 now. And then she had Lily. Lily is 21 now. One day, Betty had called me and she said, Pastor, can you come up? I need to talk to you about something. You see, when Betty had her kids, you're able, if you're a teacher, uh, to take a leave of absence without losing your tenure or without losing your, your position on the teacher's roster. And so she did that so that she could be with her little ones. But now the time had come when she needed to come back or she would lose tenure and lose her teaching position. So she wanted my prayers and she wanted my guidance. And Betty told me, she said, you know, I've got some of my friends. And some of my friends have said, well, of course you're going back to the school. Of course you're going to go back to teaching. You would not want to stay home and just be a mother. And Betty looked at me and she had a tear coming down her cheek. Because she said to me, I love being a mother. I can't imagine my life without my two kids. She said, we don't have as much money, but she said, we pack a picnic and we can put the kids in, all like in the wagon and stuff and, and we go off on a little trip, a little jump. I love my life. I love my marriage. I love my kids. I love being a mother. And I looked at Betty and I said, you know, there was a time when if a woman went into the workplace outside of the home, they said, oh, she's a bad mom. How terrible of a woman she is. And then the pendulum swung, where all of a sudden then, if you embrace the calling of being a stay-at-home mom and working, and believe me, it is hard work. I know, I've watched my wife, I've watched my daughters, who are not only working 40, 50 hours a week, but also wiving and mothering. I said to Betty, I said, isn't it sad that we would say that that person is unfulfilled or less of a woman? Really? I said, how sad. How sad. Well, our ways had parted over the years because I got a call out to a congregation in Tacoma, Washington, and she and her family moved to Cold Springs, Macquarie area. And then I got a call to Rochester, and I came back to Minnesota. And all of a sudden, I don't go on Facebook much, but one day on my Facebook, and there is a picture that Betty has posted of her son Sam graduating from college. And so I reconnected with her, and I put a little note on there. I said, I remember the day he was baptized, because baptism, you know, is the womb of the church. It's what makes us all brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, cousins. It's what makes us family of God. And so I wrote a note and I said, I remember the day that I was there and I got to pour the water and speak the word on God's behalf. I said, I remember that. And I remember our conversations and the joy that you and your family brought to my life. And she wrote a note back and she said, Pastor Dave, you'd be so proud of Sam and the young man that he has become. You see, he was raised in the faith, in worship, serving God, praising God with their musical talents. And then I saw a thing that was posted on Facebook. You see, Betty was in the hospital. She had had a heart valve replacement in 2016, and she was now needing to have another one. That cobalt radiation, it did damage to her organs over the course of time. It gave her 42 more years. And so April 26, 2017, a little over a year ago, Betty went home to Jesus. Loving the fact that God had called her to be a mother and she got to be a mother not only to children in school, but children in church and children in the home. And she taught her kids, Sam and Lily, along with her beloved husband, the wind. She taught them, you are engraved 
on the hands of God. Your walls are always before you. That's the prophet Isaiah. Our first reading for today. Where God's people, because of their sin, have ended up in exile, in Babylonian captivity. And now they're despairing and they're wondering, is there a future? Is there hope? Is all hope lost? And God sends the prophet Isaiah and gives him a word to speak. And the word is, you think you're forsaken? You think you're forgotten? Is it possible for a mother who is nursing her little one at her breast to forget her child? Hard to imagine, isn't it? I suppose, maybe, perhaps. Nevertheless, says the Lord, I will not forget you. For I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. And we know that in Christ, Isaiah was talking about the cross and the wounds of Jesus and being immersed in baptism into his death and resurrection. Our walls are always before him. He knows you. He knows where you live. He won't forget. And he won't forsake you. Never. Now today we're celebrating Mother's Day. But I know, and you know, I've been around long enough to know that if you ask some people, Mother's Day and being invited to a baby shower are perhaps two of the most painful times in some women's lives. I've walked with puppies when the mother has given birth to a stillborn. I've walked with couples who have faced numerous miscarriages. I've walked with couples who for six to eight years have tried everything, even through mail, battling infertility, SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. And if you've recently lost your mother, or if you're a parent that has lost a child, then you know that there is an element of pain and suffering to this mothering gift of God. There is. But God restores our hope. And like a mother hen, refuses to abandon or forsake us. When I was growing up in church, there was a woman. She was in the eyes of the world, just simply single her whole life. But not in the eyes of young people growing up in the church. You see, if you have the faith of Jesus, you are never barren. You have more cousins and sons and daughters and grandchildren and aunts and uncles and than you can even begin to name or number. And Annis Fredrickson, she worked at the grocery store in the pharmacy part. And she got two weeks of vacation a year. And every Sunday, you know what she did? She taught her kids in Sunday school. Her kids! Her kids. Her brood. Her little chicks entrusted to her by Jesus. And she had two weeks of vacation a year. And you know what she used one of those weeks of vacation every year for? Vacation Bible school. So that she could teach her little ones. She understood what Jesus was saying in our gospel for today. We are the brood of God, baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus. When I went to my first parish in Lake William, there was a woman who met me. I'd only been there for a few days. She was coming out of the church. They had different families take responsibility for different weeks for keeping the church vacuum clean, dusted, you know. And she comes out and she says, you must be our new pastor. And I said, yes. You must be a member of the congregation. Oh, I'm here cleaning. And then she went on and on and on, about oh, 10 minutes, without taking a breath, <laughs> telling me about her kids and her grandkids, on and on and on, so proud. And I said to her, when she finally took a breath, I said, wow, 
You must really love your family. And she looked at me and she said, I'd do anything for my family. And do you know what I did? I like to get close to people. I said, good, because you and me, we're family. There was a, a woman named Jan Jacobson in Lake Lillian. Her and her husband, Russell, they adopted my wife and me. We had a son when we came to Lake Lillian. Then we had two daughters that were born at Rice Hospital in Wilmer. They adopted us because as a pastor, sometimes you can't get away like at Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter. And so they invited us and we became part of their family. And Jan, would be in church sometimes. And remember, my wife would have a newborn and a two-year-old and a four-year-old sitting right. And that can be a little bit of a challenge, really. If you haven't experienced it, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> when your husband is leading worship and preaching and you're sitting in the pew with a newborn and a two and a four-year-old, but Grandma Jan, huh, see, she was family, she'd sit right there and she'd say, Joshua, Jenna, you get back here and sit with Grandma. And then Jan said to me one day, she said, you know, Pastor Dave, that baptism stuff really bothers me. And I said, really? She said, you know how whenever there's a baptism in church, I used to think it was just a cute little ceremony. You know, take a picture. She said, I can't do that anymore because you always ask that same question. You say, and so I asked the congregation here assembled, do you promise to help fulfill these responsibilities? Bring them to the services of God's house. Teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed. Raise them in the faith. Do you promise? And she says, I really have to swallow hard now. Because when I say I do, I know that the little one is my responsibility. And if moms and dads aren't bringing them to church, then I need to go and pick up my little brother or my little sister. She understood what it means when God engraves us on the palm of his hands. Never forgotten, never forsaken. I grew up on a farm. I love farming. A little boy on a farm, he, uh, he heard this terrible squawking. And he went outside and there was a chicken hawk going after the mother hen. He grabbed the biggest stick that he could find, and he went over there, he was going to beat off that chicken hawk, and then the chicken hawk, by the time he got there, flew away. And that mother hen laid there lifeless, beaten, battered, bloody. And the little boy thought, why? Why didn't the mother hen go just a few feet away into the protection of the chicken coop? And then, squirming out from underneath the mother hen, four beautiful little chicks, covered with blood. The blood of their mother hen. Dear friends in Christ, Jesus is your mother hen, and you are his chicks, and you are covered with his blood. He died for you, he rose for you. See, behold, pay attention, you go and tell that fox, he doesn't have to come looking for me. No one gets between a mama bear and her cup. See? You. See? You are engraved on the palms of Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.